Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in early 2019, many reviewers slated the GTX 1650. I'm talking the original card, not the super version that came along a few months later. Ironically, it was the 1650 super that ultimately put the final nail in the coffin of the already dead on arrival base version. In my review, I pretty much agreed with what I had already heard, and that was that the AMD RX 570 would be a better choice, though if you could find a 1650 on the used market for cheap, then a small form factor 75 watt version could benefit a low power, entry level gaming system. However, fast forward to the present day and things have changed. This cool looking ASUS 1650 Mini released this past April and unlike its predecessors uses GDDR6 memory instead of GDDR5. Now don't get me wrong, I still can't recommend it unless you need a card that works without external power or you can find one at a heavily cut down used price because it's still priced too close to a 1650 Super and still falls behind that and the RX 570 performance wise in pretty much every gaming situation. That's why it's considered bad. Sure, it does okay in games, it's just when you take into consideration everything around it at a similar price point, it stands out for the wrong reason. But, because availability in some countries is messed up and some cards are impossible to find recently, plus prices can be all over the place, I still thought it would be worth a review in case any of you out there want one. Furthermore, a lot of the 1650 reviews you'll find online will be outdated because they're based on the original version, so I'll be highlighting the differences I find today in terms of frame rates. Let's get into some games and see how things go. The gameplay on screen will of course be from the new GDDR6 version, but comparative figures will be on screen as well. Starting with the newest Assassin's Creed game, Valhalla, and the 1650 g DDR6 does an okay job with medium settings at 1080p. The footage here is taken from a very early point in the game, so there isn't too much going on. To keep things the same between both models, I ran the in-game benchmark test for the on-screen results. The GDDR6 1650 as expected pulls ahead here by a little bit, and this is going to be a recurring theme with the average frame rate hitting anywhere from say 3 to 10 FPS more with the newer GDDR6 VRAM based card. It's certainly an improvement, and let's say in a situation where the GDDR5 card may be averaging just below 60 FPS in a game, then the newer GDDR6 variant should in theory be able to take you over that target frame rate. Next up it's the new Call of Duty and here 1080p medium is your best bet with high texture settings. You could push things up higher with this card but with FPS titles I like to hold back a little bit just to ensure that we get a constantly smooth experience. As usual the footage you see here is from a bot match but the figures were taken from an online game playing the same Moscow map. Honestly, from what I saw, there is no difference whether you're fighting bots or other players across the world, and medium settings still looks pretty good. Once again, the performance differences have been highlighted in the two boxes. The classic GTA 5 is next, and I was happy to see a plus 100 FPS average with the GDDR6 GPU. This performs with about 7 FPS more than the GDDR5 card, and with the OG GPU we're seeing less than 100 frames per second. Now this is of course no big deal to be honest, and just like throughout the newer card will do better, but the frame rates with the OG card are still absolutely fine. As a last word for GTA, I should also mention that MSAA is disabled, which really does help with faster frame rates, and we could still push the settings to very high or even ultra and retain a 60 plus FPS average, but there will be more dips. Red Dead Redemption 2 at the high quality settings now, and the difference here was quite similar to that of GTA, about 6 to 7 FPS between the two. Uh, 6 to 7, not 67. <laughs> Both cards fell short of 60 frames per second, well 50 FPS in fact, with these settings, but 60 FPS should be doable with further sacrifices. Here, I wanted to see how good we could make the game look and still get a playable frame rate. Honestly, visually I think Red Dead Redemption 2 will be among some of the best titles for years to come, and it still amazes me just how good this can look, even with middle of the road settings. 
The Witcher 3 now and I have thrown this back into the benchmarks because visually it still looks great and many of you are still playing it, judging by the requests I had, to add it back into the mix. Now I decided to stay away from the ultra settings here and instead opted for high under both the graphical and post processing menus. The reason for this is because the game still looks fantastic at these settings and will of course run better than it will on Ultra. Both cards can manage at least 60 FPS for the most part and look, I'm trying to stay away from constantly referring back to the 1650 Super and saying how much better that would be, but you know, we're all thinking it. <laughs> As I said before though, if your choice is limited to a 1650 for whatever reason, then yes, the GDDR6 version makes more sense if it's priced the same as the GDDR5 card. If it's a lot more, then no, I wouldn't say it's worth it over the original. Let's finalise then with Rainbow Six Siege. I ran the in-game benchmark once again with both GPUs using the very high preset instead of Ultra, just again to try and squeeze some more frames from these cards. Though, I did turn the render scale up to 100% so that we were running at full 1920 by 1080 For some reason, the game defaults it to 50%, so watch out for that. Again, both cards will grant you at least 100 frames per second, though bear in mind the gameplay mode and map will alter this performance and likely increase or decrease the performance gap between both GPUs. So, the 1650 may not be as bad as you remember, but that's probably because you forgot all about it. Seriously though, the GDDR6 version will make you ever so slightly happier in games, but yeah, it's still not really recommendable as part of a new PC build in 2020. 99 pounds or dollars or euros or the equivalent to that in every currency would be a better markup. Please just buy a 1650 Super or 5500 XT though if you have a six pin power connector. I'm begging you, please avoid the 1650. However, what I will say is that this Asus version remained silent, the fans do turn off at low load and the card looks fantastic with this cool looking light as well so you know I really like this version of the card. This dual fan setup does look really good, I'm always a fan of Asus's products, it's just the 1650 GPU itself, yeah it's just so hard to recommend. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if you use one of these cards in your system whether you use the GDDR5 or GDDR6 version and how well it's holding up for you in 2020. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one when I am trying to compete with the new Xbox Series S budget next gen console. So yeah what I've done basically is uh, compare a $300 roughly gaming PC about 200 and something pounds with um, the Xbox Series S performance so yeah not sure how well that's going to go down I mean it's early days but hopefully you can join me in that video when we will be taking a little bit of an in-depth look at performance.